So this is my second sheet on specific heat capacity. The reason I did two was because during the lockdown in 2020, I did two uh, live streams about this. So this is my second sheet of questions. These ones get a little bit more advanced. But the first one, um, again, we've been given data, but now we've got 4.2 kilojoules. And so in here, I'm converting it to 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Now, the other bit of information that's implied is that water, pure water, boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So that gives 5,400 joules. Um, the second one, uh, the mass of water needed to transfer 20% less energy. What I've done is I've divided 1.5 divided by 1.2. So that's how we're going to make it 20% less, which is 1.25. Now, this one here, please do not try at home. If you do it at home, don't blame me. Yes, you can boil milk in a kettle, but the kettle will probably stink of milk afterwards. It's going to be very hard to, to actually clean it out properly. But basically, this one over here um, looks at how much energy it would take to, ri to raise two pints of milk to 100 degrees um, if it starts in the fridge at four. So again, using the data, uh, converting one pint um, into millilitres, knowing, of course, that 1,000 millilitres is approximately equal to one kilogram, uh, this gives a value of 430,000 joules. The next one, um, it's a kind of a two-part calculation. The first bit needs to look at the energy transferred. And this is where you need to remember that power is equal to energy divided by time. So if we know the power and we know the time, we can then work out the total energy transferred. And then we can then use this to find the specific heat capacity is about 380 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. This is a lot lower than water. Water has quite a high specific heat capacity. Metals often have quite a low value for their specific heat capacity. And then we go on to a graph. I've got a dual thief here, one of the, the Lego minifigures. Um, to work out the specific heat capacity, I've actually taken some numbers off the graph. I've looked at the biggest change in energy, which is 40, and I've looked at the final minus the initial temperatures of 25 minus 5, which gives a value of 500 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. But if you had something where you had 6 grams rather than 4 grams, we've now got 1.5 times much as, as much mass. So we'd have a reduction in the final temperature because that same amount of energy is heating up more stuff. In actual fact, if you did the calculation, you'd find it ends up at 18.3 degrees Celsius. So we still have a straight line, just with a lower gradient. And this final one over here, uh, looking at lithium, um, it's got a really high specific heat capacity of uh, 3,560. Um, but again, we're just using this data here we're rearranging the equation, putting the numbers in to find that the final temperature is our initial value of 20 plus the change of 61 to make 81. And again, the final one, uh, what we're going to be looking at is a change in temperatures 52. We add it to the initial value of 20 to get a value of 72. Um, and that's because water will have a lower final temperature because water has such a bigger value of specific heat capacity. So, some quite advanced questions here, but hopefully if you can do these, you can then do any possible question you may ever be asked at GCSE about specific heat capacity.